Hello everyone, my name is Joni and welcome to Love Qualified, a ministry that is dedicated to encouraging others to experience the sovereign love of the one true God who has qualified us to be his beloved ones. Today I'm so excited because I'm finally going to be reviewing Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. So I've heard so much about this book. Can you imagine? It's been out for so many years. I think it was first published in like 2004, was it 1997, the late 90s, early 2000s. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but the book has been out for ages. And I was ashamed to call myself a reader of Christian fiction and I had never read this book. You know, I've heard so many people talk about it, I'd watch um, reviews about it. I just wanted to finally get my hands on it and finally know what the fuss is about. But the main thing that um, kind of pushed me to read this book is because Back in March, I sent my manuscripts, some of you may know that I'm writing a novel, my first novel. I sent my manuscripts to some beta readers to read and give me feedback. And one of the comments I had at the end of um, the book was after my, my one of my beta readers read the whole book is she said that um, she recognized some similarities between my book and Redeeming Love. And I was like, oh, that was quite um, funny because I'd never read Redeeming Love. But you, you know, as they say, no idea is original. The only thing that make, makes your book unique is the fact that you're the one writing it. You're writing it from your own experience, your own perspective and different characters. But there are themes that do occur in multiple books. So that was the main thing that pushed me to say, okay, someone has kind of said that aspects of my book reminds them of Redeeming Love. Let me finally read this book and see what it's all about. So Redeeming Love is a historical fiction. And like I said, it's a modern day retelling of the book of Hosea. The very first thing that I did before I read the book was to read the book of Hosea because I wanted to know for myself what the book of Hosea is about before reading the book because then I wanted to make sure that I got the same lesson that, um, that the book of Hosea was trying to teach me from the book. I'm just going to read the blurb to you guys quickly um, because I think it explains the book better than I'm ever going to explain it or summarize it. Okay, so this is the blurb. California's gold country, 1850. A time when men sold their souls for a bag of gold and women sold their bodies for a place to sleep. Angel expects nothing from men but betrayal. Sold into prostitution as a child, she survives by keeping her hatred alive. And what she hates most are the men who use her, leaving her empty and dead inside. Then she meets Michael Hosea, a man who seeks his father's heart in everything. Michael Hosea obeys God's call to marry Angel and to love her unconditionally. Slowly, Day by day, he defies Angel's every bitter expectation until, despite her resistance, her frozen heart begins to thaw. But with her unexpected softening come overwhelming feelings of unworthiness and fear. And so Angel runs back to the darkness, away from her husband's pursuing love, terrified of the truth she can no longer deny. Her final healing must come from the one who loves her even more than Michael Hosea does the one who will never let her go. A life-changing story of God's unconditional, redemptive, all-consuming love. I think that pretty much like says it all. It's an absolutely phenomenal book. It's actually so good. Like people aren't exaggerating when they say that, you know, this is their favorite book of all time. It tells the story of this girl, Angel, the beginning of the book, you know, explains to you every single thing, what went down before she became a prostitute. As we know, the prophet Hosea was a prophet who God told to marry a prostitute and he obeyed God's voice and he married this girl uh, or woman called Goma and she did, you know, she hurt him really bad. Um, she left him so many times and God still instructed him to go back and get her. And she even had children with other men as well whilst married to Hosea and it's kind of a sad story like if you think about you know what the prophet Hosea would have gone through but the whole marriage was to show God's 
all pursuing, all consuming, unconditional love for us. And it's the same thing that this book is trying to show. Now, Angel starts off being sold into prostitution when she's only eight years old and then you know she lives her life up until she's in her late teens that's all she's known that's the life that she's known and then all of a sudden this man michael hosea comes to her to her brothel and says i want to marry you i love you i want to take you out of this place now obviously you know he was following god's voice and although it really wasn't something that he wanted to do and he was shocked when he heard God say that this is the woman I want you to marry he still obeyed God's voice and he still went ahead and acted on it and he took her out of that place with much resistance of course but that was not the end that was just the beginning of the whole story the book is so deep it addresses so many deep issues like prostitution cause um child sex trafficking and child prostitution there were so many parts of the book that got me close to tears i mean i didn't cry but i got really emotional like i, I felt a lot of emotions like just things i felt so many things i felt anger i felt sadness i felt happy at some point i felt relief i was just up and down and up and down there were some points where i was laying on my bed and i was reading it and i had to put my book down and just be like why and we see god's sovereignty being weaved throughout the book because god was in control the whole time and his plan was working i love the fact that michael hosea he is the best christian male character that i've read so far like i said i haven't read that many christian fiction books but so far i just love the way his character was portrayed how he was always seeking to please god and not man i love the fact that he had such unwavering faith love his character he was my favorite character of course if you can't tell but he's my favorite character in the whole book whatever it is that he was doing he sought to obey God's voice and one thing I also love that was portrayed in this book was his communication with God and it was the fact that his heart was always postured to obey he was always ready to obey God that's why God continuously spoke to him God was always speaking to him and he was always speaking to God and even when he was faced with like so many terrible situations he always um, spoke to God about it. One of the things that I liked really much about this book is that you know the whole theme of the book, the fact that it teaches us about God's unconditional love. Jesus is the bridegroom, and we as the church, we are the bride of Christ. And a lot of times, us as Christians, we prostitute ourselves by going after other gods, going after things that are not God, and we have idols in our lives we have things that we treasure more than we treasure god and this book is just a powerful story that reminds us about how we wrong god and how we cause him grief you know by the things that we do and how we prostitute ourselves with going after things that are nowhere near as satisfying as he is to us and it's heartbreaking because i was my heart was breaking so much for michael jose in this book Angel hurt him so much in so many different ways, yet he stayed, he kept going back. He has done it all for us, everything that anyone could possibly do for love. He has laid down his life voluntarily to save us from a life of sin and death and he has brought us into his marvellous light. And you know sometimes we still take that for granted we take his grace for granted and we seek after things that are not meaningful things that you know are just vain and it just makes you examine yourself examine the relationship that you have with god and you say god loves us so much he loves us so very much and the only reason why michael hosea was able to love angel this much in this book is because he loved god it just reminds me of first john chapter 4 verse 19 which says that we love only because god has loved us first do i love other people as well with this same unconditional love i can tolerate some people sometimes but do i truly love them do i show them love and i think that's something that i have been thinking about and just examining myself in that respect do i love others you know am i showing the same love that god is showing me to others and you know it's hard but it's very possible because god has given us that grace to love others as well and because he is changing us to be like him to be christ-like 
we cannot say we don't love our brothers or sisters because if we say we don't love our brothers or sisters then we don't love god i found it funny how michael kept calling angel different names so her name at the start of the book the name that her mom named her is um sarah but then obviously when she became a prostitute she was called angel michael uh, took her away from the brothel where she was working she didn't want to say what her real name was obviously because she didn't trust him so she, he just called her different names he first called her mara which means bitter because she was very bitter towards him when you know he first married her and brought her into his house then he called her amanda because he said that it just fit her well and then sometimes he called her terza or teza or terza just to show up the amount of love that he had for her another thing that i do love about this book is the fact that it teaches us a lot about obedience god has been teaching me so much in the last couple of months about fearless obedience and i do believe that he is bringing me into a season of fearless obedience i have been praying and seeking his face for the confidence and the faith to step out in faith and in fearless obedience when I hear his voice to step out of my comfort zone and to carry out the work that God wants me to do I also love the fact that the book teaches us a lot about forgiveness um, there's a lot of things that go down it's messy it's very messy but again life is messy and people do hurt us people wrong us um, but then it teaches us a lot about having to forgive others 77 times seven times having to forgive people who hurt us one of the things in the book that uh really broke my heart or that i really felt was when one of the times one of the many times that angel hurt michael and then michael was speaking to god he was really angry he was like god can you see what she's doing and god was like yeah i see what she's doing and he was like and you still expect me to love her after everything she's done and god was like yes as I have loved you. I want you to love her as I have loved you. And yeah, that just, that was so deep. A lot of the time we find it so hard to forgive others. We find it so hard to love others because they have wronged us. Again, it makes you think about the number of times that we wrong God, but he loves us all the same. Now I'm going to be really picky and talk, and talk about some of the things I didn't really like about the book. The very first thing was, um, let me just say, my least favorite characters. I didn't hate them. They were like my least favorite characters. Um, Paul was one of them. Paul was Michael Jose's brother-in-law and he was his best friend. And there were certain things that Paul did in the book that I just thought, where not cool especially if you know you call this person your brother and you call this person your best friend you can understand why he did it but at the same time i just think he was just a jerk for majority of the book to be honest and until the very last couple of chapters i still didn't like him my second least favorite character was miriam to a certain extent um she was you know very nice um but i just felt like there's sometimes when i just found her character a little bit annoying and um sometimes when she acted a little bit desperate and i feel like i think that because she's a complete opposite of the kind of person i am and i feel like if i were to meet her in real life you know there are certain things that she does that would annoy me <laughs> and the very last thing that i would say i didn't really like about the book is the point of view so um francine rivers decided to write in third person omniscient i didn't like the fact that there was a lot of head hopping like sometimes she would be in michael's head and then she would jump to angel's head and then to paul's head and then to miriam's head i was like i don't care about you know these other people like there's a lot of head hopping in the same chapter and i just that really it annoyed me at some point i was like i don't want to know about this person i would rather you know just two points of views or like a more personal point of view than having all this head hopping but again that's just me being picky but all in all overall i absolutely loved this book i would encourage you to read it if you're looking for a life-changing story a powerful work of fiction that will remind you of the unconditional overwhelming perfect love of god 
I would say read Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. Let me know if you have read this book and what you think about it. If you have any other suggestions for Christian fiction books, um, be it biblical fiction, historical fiction, contemporary, YA, leave them down below. The list of your favorite books, I would love to read them. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day. Remember that the sovereign love of God has qualified you to be his beloved one. Bye.